Before I go on and tell you more about using subject verb agreement to test neural language models, I want to tell you a little bit about the psycholinguistics of subject verb agreement. And this is a very well studied phenomenon in cognitive science, so there's a lot to say. I'll only say a little bit. It may not be a surprise to you to hear that subject verb agreement is actually one of the most common quote unquote errorful language production behaviors uh, in English. Uh, in fact, uh, the New York Times for a number of years ran a a periodic column called After Deadline that talked about the challenges and mistakes that go on during the process of producing the paper every day. And uh, grammar errors are one thing that uh, people in newspapers often are very interested in. Uh, and there was a periodic version of this column called Ugly Disagreements. This is the fourth installment uh, that I'm showing you here, a couple of snippets from it, because subject verb agreement errors are actually one of the hardest things to catch. Um, it's not that infrequent that neither the author nor the copy editor finds the uh, error before the actual publication of the paper. Here are two examples that occurred in uh, real articles. So the push the, is the subject, that should be a singular uh, verb, but the verb uh, of the sentence, the main verb is go, it's in the plural. Um, interestingly, the, it has, there are a number of attractors that you can see, a number of other noun phrases in between the main clause subject and the verb. Actually, the most recent noun is not plural, but it's part of a coordinated noun phrase, the markets and the economy. And of course, if a coordinated noun phrase is the subject of a sentence, then the, um, then the verb should be plural. And that seems to be what happened is that the agreement was made with the coordinated noun phrase, not with the main clause subject. Another example, criticism is the main clause subject. The verbs, this is a coordinated verb phrase, have led and have prompted. Those are both appearing in the plural. You'll notice that, um, once again, there are a number of, um, uh, of attractors in between the main clause subject and the verbs, and the most recent one is plural. So these are just two naturalistic examples. It's not an uncommon thing to find. So how is this studied in uh, an experimental context? So for the last 30 years, there's been quite a, little bit, quite a lot of work on this. Um, agreement performance for humans is often studied with what's called a preamble completion task. So an experimental participant will be given the beginning of a sentence, for example, the key to the cabinets, and then it will be taken away from them. And their requirement, their task, is to redo the preamble, rewrite it or re-speak it, and then complete the sentence. So completions, uh, the responses in these trials might be of the following types. So for example, the key to the cabinets was on the table. Uh, this, they correctly uh, uh, created the, uh, they correctly reproduced the preamble, and the verb was agrees with the main clause subject. So this would be marked as, uh, as a correct trial. Um, the key to the cabinets doesn't work anymore. This would be also a correct trial. The key to the cabinets are rusty. This would be an incorrect trial. Um, and then there are trials that don't really count. So for example, the key to the cabinets would be really helpful to have right now. Would is a modal verb. So it doesn't distinguish between singular or plural agreement. And so this is non-applicable. Um, the, key to, the keys to the cabinets are in my pocket. This production would be a mis, uh, a mis recapitulation of the preamble. And so this would also be not applicable. So if this was a set of responses for an experiment like this, then the error rate would be one third or 33%. Um, this is a, uh, notice that this is a singular head noun followed by a um, plural attractor. So that's, we call that a singular singular condition. And this is um, studied in uh, parametric manipulation of uh, factorial manipulation of the singular and plural status of both the, um, the main clause subject, the head noun of the subject and the potential attractor. So here we have both singular, 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 plural, plural, singular, plural, plural. Um, and a characteristic kind of finding would be um, in this case that the, um, uh, that the error rates, first of all, they're across the board relatively low. And that's actually quite important because it's the fact that error, usually people don't, don't actually produce things that don't agree with the head noun suggests that it's a reasonable thing to do, call the agreement with the head noun the actual quote unquote correct pattern and deviations from that to be quote unquote errors even though they're actually produced by humans. Uh, it's a non-trivial thing to say that a relatively common behavior linguistically might be something that we call an error. It's an implicit appeal to a notion between competence and performance. 
where linguistic competence is what should be done, what a grammatical characterization says is done, and performance is generally something like that, but might deviate a little bit. And the error rates are the deviations on that view. What you'll see here is that error rates are low across the board. They're also, they're, very, they're lowest, um, they're, they're quite low, especially when the, um, both the head noun and the potential attractor agree in number. Um, but the highest is actually uh, very, there's a lot to say about it. The highest rate of error actually comes when you have a plural attractor in between a singular noun and the verb. You do not get a high error rate when you have a singular attractor between the plural noun and the verb. And I want you to remember that because that'll be something interesting to compare with language models. In particular, you may remember that Linzen et al. found that for both an LSTM and for an SRN model, that the model made more mistakes with plural attractors for singular head nouns than it did for singular attractors for plural head nouns. And actually, that is the same pattern as humans show. So interestingly, for reasons that are not obvious, these models recapitulate at least one interesting granular pattern of error rates in human language production. This uh, phenomenon, subject-verb agreement, has also been studied in human language comprehension. Um, and just to show you how this is done, um, here's an example of a sentence that might be read word by word in a self-paced reading paradigm. The musician who the reviewer praised so highly will probably win. Okay, this is ungrammatical. It is a plural verb and its subject is reviewer. So it should be praises, not praise. And you probably found this anomalous. But suppose then that I change not the number marking on reviewer or praise, but the number marking on the musicians. The musicians who the reviewer praised so highly will probably win. This may not say, sound so bad to you anymore, and that's interesting. And we'll see actually quantitative evidence of that pattern in human language processing. This manipulation of the singular versus plural status of the head noun of the relative clause, which is the object of the relative clause verb praise, not the subject. So it should not control agreement with praise. This is manipulated in this experiment of wages at all 2009. Alternatively, praise might be changed to praises. So we have a two by two manipulation, the musician or musicians who the reviewer praise or praises. So self-paced reading word by word. Um, the first thing that I wanna draw your attention to, so first of all, the lines here that have solid uh, dots are ones where this uh, head noun musician is singular when uh, the dots are um, transparent, they have white um, interior, then that noun is musicians, plural. And um, the solid lines are grammatical cases where the, um, so this is always cases where the, where the verb is praises because the subject is reviewer. And the dotted lines are ungrammatical ones where the verb form is praise. So what you can see here is that when there is a noticed verb agreement violation, and that have, seems to happen more when musician is singular, when the head noun of the relative clause is singular, we actually have a pretty substantial noticeable slowdown. The musician who the reviewer praise, oh, praise was an unexpected form, and you um, people are reading pretty fast and it's the processing difficulty there emerges but spills over and mostly is captured in the immediately following and to a little bit of an extent, the subsequent words. In contrast, when um, either in grammatical conditions or when the head noun is plural, the musicians, then actually you don't see any processing slowdown at all. So first of all, the musician who the reviewer praise, praise is something that introduces processing disruption relative to a error-free correction, or error-free continuation. But also, when the head noun is musicians, when it's plural, and it looks like the right form for what a subject of the verb would be, then actually that seems to mask any agreement error detection. So not only in comprehension, but in production, sorry, not, not only in production, but in comprehension, there are limits to the human ability to detect and respond to these agreement violations. However, when they are detected, it's quite clear that there is processing violation. And so there, the processing, once again, is highly incremental. And the patterns that we, and we can reasonably expect an artificial system to identify uh, uh, failures of subject-verb agreement, um, at least as much as humans can. 